Right now, there are nine countries in the world that either openly have nuclear weapons or are widely believed to have them. All of them have signed something called the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Basically, it says if you don't have nukes, don't try and get them. And if you do have them, you should work towards getting rid of them eventually. And if you want them, you better chat to us about it first and you better be really nice because we're allowed to have them. I don't know if you're allowed to have them. So, who's got the most nukes? Before we get into it, make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. We do five videos a week on whatever is going on in the world and we love knowing stuff. You should subscribe. At number nine, North Korea, 50 warheads. North Korea actually signed on to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty back in 1985, but in 2003 they bailed, saying it was because of US hostility. Since then they've been steadily flexing their muscles, carrying out a series of nuclear tests starting in 2006. These days North Korea is believed to have around 50 nuclear warheads, and they're cranking out enough bomb material to build about 6 or 7 more each year. On top of that, they've got a hefty stash of chemical and biological weapons too, just to keep things as tense as they can. Number 8. Israel. 90 warheads. Israel hasn't signed the treaty either, and officially they've never admitted to having nuclear weapons, but pretty much everyone agrees that they do. They've got like a super secretive nuclear program that they don't talk about, but many experts think it's not just active, it's growing. Instead of confirming anything, Israel sticks to this line. It won't be the first to introduce nuclear weapons to the Middle East, which is sort of a bit of a technicality, really. Still, it's widely believed they've got at least 90 warheads, and according to some experts, they've got enough bomb-making material to potentially build hundreds more. Number 7. Pakistan. 170 warheads. India and Pakistan, long-time rivals, also haven't signed the NPT, and both have steadily built up their nuclear firepower. India got there first, testing its first nuke in 1974 and then again in 1998. Not wanting to be left behind, Pakistan carried out its own nuclear test just weeks after India's in 98. As of 2025, unofficial reports say Pakistan has around 170 nuclear warheads, mostly of the fission type. Unlike some countries that say they'll never strike first, Pakistan has a different approach. Their policy is all about minimum credible deterrence, which basically means if they're seriously threatened, everything is on the table. That said, there's no strong evidence suggesting Pakistan is messing around with biological weapons or running an offensive bioweapons program. Number six, India, 180 warheads. India does have nuclear weapons and used to have chemical weapons too. While they've never officially said how many nukes they have, recent estimates put the number at around 180. India has done two rounds of nuclear testing, first in 74 and then again in 98. They've also signed on to the Hague Code of Conduct, which aims to limit the spread of ballistic missiles. But they've steered clear of the NPT and the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, saying both are unfair and biased. India did have chemical weapons in the past, but voluntarily destroyed its entire stockpile by 2009, one of just seven countries to hit that deadline. As for nuclear policy, India follows a no-first-use approach, meaning they won't launch a nuclear strike unless they're attacked first. Though, there is a caveat. If there is a major biological or chemical attack on India or its forces, that could change. They've also built up a nuclear triad, meaning they can launch nukes from land, air and sea as part of their credible minimum deterrence strategy. Number 5. United Kingdom. 224 warheads. The UK has had nuclear weapons since 1952 and is one of the five officially recognised nuclear states under the NPT. It started its own program during World War II, which later merged with the US's Manhattan Project. After the US decided to cut off nuclear info in 1946, Britain launched its own tests, beginning with one off the coast of Australia in 1952, followed by several more over the next decade. After the Cold War, the UK began scaling back. It scrapped all nuclear systems except set its submarine-launched Trident missiles and aimed to cut its stockpile by 65% by the mid-2020s. But in 2021, the government reversed course. Citing global threats, it raised the cap from 225 to 260 warheads and stopped sharing details about its arsenal, which drew some criticism. Today, the UK is the only nuclear power with just one delivery system, its Trident subs. Number 4. France, 290 warheads. All right, now we're at full-on world-destroying numbers. 
France is one of the five official nuclear powers under the NPT, but it doesn't have chemical or biological weapons. It's also the only EU country with its own independent nuclear arsenal separate from NATO. France became the fourth country to test a nuclear weapon back in 1960. Today, it's believed to have around 290 nuclear warheads, making it the fourth largest stockpile in the world. Most of France's nukes are either deployed or ready to go at short notice. Their arsenal is part of a wider strategy to keep nuclear control in French hands rather than relying on NATO. France is also one of the more transparent nuclear states, regularly sharing details about its weapons. Since 2008, French leaders have stuck to the policy of keeping the arsenal below 300 warheads. Number 3. China. 600 warheads. A new report says China has over 600 nuclear warheads and is adding about 100 more each year, faster than any other country right now. At a press briefing, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson didn't confirm the numbers, but said China sticks to a self-defense nuclear strategy. They claim their arsenal is kept at the minimum needed for national security and that they won't start a nuclear fight or target non-nuclear countries. Still, if things keep moving at this pace, China could have around 1,500 warheads by 2035. China is thought to have around 24 nuclear warheads ready to launch at short notice. Under Xi Jinping, the country's nuclear buildup has sped up more than ever before, which is a big shift from earlier leaders like Deng Xiaoping, who believed a small arsenal was enough. This rise in nuclear power is especially concerning for Taiwan, which China claims as its own. Beijing has said it's willing to use force to take the island, and some experts argue a stronger nuclear arsenal could scare off outside interference, especially from the US, which is one of the main things preventing war so far. Number 2. The United States of America. 3,700 warheads. The US was the first country to develop nuclear weapons, and the only one to ever use them in war, when they dropped bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in World War II. Between 1940 and 1990, the US poured an estimated $11.7 trillion in today's money into its nuclear program, building everything from warheads to rockets to fancy command centers. Since 1945, the US has produced over 70,000 nukes, more than any other country ever. Keeping their nuclear arsenal running costs about 60 billion US dollars a year. Number one, coming in with the most nukes on Earth, Russia. 5,500 warheads. Russia has or has had all three types of weapons of mass destruction, nuclear, chemical, and biological. It's one of the five officially recognized nuclear powers under the NPT, and one of just four countries with a full nuclear triad, alongside the US, China, and India. Russia is deep into a years-long effort to upgrade its old Soviet-era nukes, but delays have slowed things down. As of 2025, it's estimated to have around 5,459 nuclear warheads, the largest stockpile in the world. So what would happen if they were to use them? There is no such thing as a limited nuclear war. A new study makes that terrifyingly clear. Led by Dr. Lily Jia, the research shows that even a small nuclear exchange, using less than 3% of the world's nukes, could trigger global famine and kill up to 2.5 billion people. A full-scale war between the US and Russia? Over 5 billion deaths. And that's not even counting those killed instantly by blasts or radiation. It's the latest in decades of research warning us, nuclear weapons don't just threaten one region, they threaten all of humanity. Crazy hot take from me today, nukes are bad. If you like this video, check out one I did recently about the history between Israel and Iran, or if you're interested in wee little history lessons like this, check out one I did about ceasefires a couple months ago when we look in history of when they actually worked. It is a bit depressing. Anyway, bye!